Good afternoon, everybody. Michael Boris, the seminarian here at St. Rose Church. And this is Social Media Mondays with Mike, and we're talking about the seven sacraments. So today we're talking about the sacrament of holy matrimony, marriage. So where in the Old Testament is this prefigured? God is the author of marriage. It is God who has given us the gift of marriage and brings about the graces through the sacrament of marriage. So where in the Old Testament do we first see this? It's one of the very first things we see in these scriptures. God created man and woman. He created them for each other. Remember, Adam was created and felt lonely. So he gave Adam a partner, gave Adam somebody who could be his companion. And Eve, of course, as woman, is the perfect match for Adam, and help, they help bring about this perfect union. So that's where we first see it in the book of Genesis. Think of uh, the book of Exodus, and really throughout the entire Old Testament, how the, uh, the Israelites, the Jewish people, came across a lot of polygamy, where they were marrying many people. This was in within Israel, Israel itself. Abraham had uh, several wives, and, and so did others. Um, but that was never God's vision from the beginning, as we see in the book of Genesis, when God created Adam and Eve. Nor was divorce in the picture. Recall that uh, Jesus, in Matthew's Gospel, said to the Pharisees, Moses permitted divorce in the old law because of the hardness of your hearts, not because it was the way it was supposed to be. Jesus himself said that, and he's pointing back to Adam and Eve as being the true purpose of marriage, for man and woman to be together forever when they make that commitment to each other. There are several prophets that discuss the image of marriage of man and woman, similar to the marriage of God to his people. God made a holy covenant with his people, and the Israelites are to respond to that. Uh, just as an example, we have the book of the prophet Hosea, which is not very well known. But here's what Hosea says about this image of God and his people, as well as uh, man and woman, how they, the two images help each other. On that day you shall call me my husband, says the Lord, and you shall never again call me my Lord. I will remove from her mouth the names of the Baals. They shall no longer be mentioned by their name. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me with justice and with judgment with loyalty and with compassion. I will betroth you to me with fidelity, and you shall know the Lord. So the commitment of the Lord to his people is the same commitment that married couples are called to. And this is a great image found in the Old Testament scriptures. They're also found in Ezekiel, Ruth, uh, Tobit, and the Song of Songs. The Song of Songs is actually a very passionate, poetic expression of this entire idea. Uh, where in the New Testament do we see this occur? Jesus' first public miracle, according to John's Gospel, is at a wedding, the wedding feast of Cana. So the church sees that as an image of Jesus' sanctification of marriage and why it's ultimately a sacrament uh, and why all baptized Christians are called to that sacrament. Uh, well, baptized Catholics in, in the fullness of the Catholic faith are called to that sacrament. I'm going to pick up the Bible again. Let me read from Matthew's Gospel uh, this discussion with the Pharisees. Some Pharisees approached him and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? For any cause whatsoever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning, Creator, 
the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. So again, the Lord is challenging us to realize the, the beauty of this sacrament and the beauty of man and woman committing to each other in marriage. And just the amazing graces that the Lord will provide when we take that uh, sacrament seriously. So how can we understand it today, of course? Marriage is a, a very prominent thing. A lot of people get married. But what does it mean to be married in the church? There are three goods of the sacrament of marriage that the church talks about. Uh, there are others, but these are the three uh, foundational ones. First, it is indissoluble, meaning it is not to be broken. That is why the vows say, till death do us part. It is that union of man and woman that is so strong and sanctified by the Lord that through that grace given in the sacrament that the two are to commit to each other. Now, there is annulments, and that's a whole another topic, but is, annulment is not divorce. Divorce is strictly forbidden by the Lord, and uh, that is something we are to take seriously. The second good of marriage is fidelity, and the unitive aspect of the two committing to each other, being faithful, and not uh, going about, going behind each other's backs, uh, committing adultery, for example. That's just one example, but also being faithful in their love to each other and in building each other up. Uh, this is a great good of the sacrament. And the third one is, of course, the procreative one, where the two who are one flesh create one flesh. They become co-creators with the Lord. They create new children. And that is a wonderful gift of the sacrament, and it's a wonderful gift of, of life in general. And they're meant to raise the children in the faith and to bring about a greater sense of uh, the holiness of the family through that commitment. And that's why the church talks so often about the domestic church, where it is at the home of the family where the children first learn the faith. So it's a wonderful gift, this sacrament of marriage. I hope you enjoyed this brief discussion of it. And next week I'll be concluding with the sacraments on holy orders, and then we'll move into a new topic in the weeks ahead for Lent. Thank you for joining me this week, and we'll see you again soon. God bless.